We will talk right now about future value and compounding. This is very, very, very important. Um, we will explain in a moment uh, what is what, but uh, these expressions, future value and compounding, are very, very important. So let's start slowly. We will just say why why um, one pound in hand today is valuable more than one pound promised tomorrow. And there are a number of expressions and a number of explanations like opportunity cost. In one word, it means that you could do with this one pound something very useful today and maybe multiply this. Or the risk that something happens and you will not have this one pound tomorrow. Or inflation, and not stepping into the subject right now, there is something called inflation, that the prices rise in economies normally, right? So something that costs you one pound today might, must cost, might, might cost more tomorrow and time time preference that it's it's called like general uh, attitude that people would rather have something uh, tangible today than the same amount tomorrow therefore there must be some re say a reward so how it looks like in practice the amount of investment is worth after one or more periods probably more yes like in one year you invest 200 I mean at the beginning of the time at 10 percent so effectively in um, money terms your money grows and it grows let's say by 10 percent so it means 200 plus 10 percent of 200 so it's 200 plus 20 so it means 220. It's not too complicated at the moment. So it looks like that. If we take uh, this into uh, a bit more of mathematics, in general view, that is the formula, investing for a single period. V1 value um, after a year is equal to V0 multiplied in brackets 1 plus R. So let us have a close look at the formula. So V1 is the value at time 1. Usually it's one year. Normally this is how people operate normally in economics. It's one year. V0 is the present value it means this is the cover value for today just today and r is this famous interest rate and it is expressed in this formula like 10 percent but mathematically is 0 0.10 so like for the previous example like on the page, we implement this formula and we have V1, it is 200 pounds multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.1. What makes this the same as 200 multiplied by 1.1 is an important step in this. Is 200 multiplied by 1.1 means 220. All right, I should now give you in a normal order, I should write something on a blackboard or whiteboard. I should write an example and ask you to calculate. In this way now, it is hard to do. Therefore, we will have the, like the, the, the question or the task with the answer given but it's 
ra relatively simple, so you should not have a problem in following it. So let us look like it is. We have the the um, the um, the question. Yeah, the principal is four hundred and fifty pounds. Then the period is one year, and the interest rate is 8%. The question is, how much will we earn on this investment? And another question, B, how much will we have after one year? The answer is visible. Normally, you should do the calculations yourself. But let us think. So how much we will earn? If the interest is 8%, it means 0 0.08. We multiply this by the principal, which is in our case 450. So if we multiply 0 0.08 by 450, we arrive into 36. So we earn 36. And then after a year, we have, we could calculate this in two ways. One is calculating the first thing and adding 36 plus 450, or to do it in more clear mathematic way, which is according to the formula, of course, which is 450 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.08 equals 486. I hope so far it's clear because there are really no surprises. We do the calculations fairly easy, percentages, we multiply, we add, we have, we have the concept, we have the money, we put the money in some kind of an investment, and it means that after putting the money, we have more. And we just do the calculations, like two-step calculations or like one-step calculation, it depends. Right, so I hope you are not sleeping, so let's wake us up. We do another example. Everything is like that. The only change is that the yearly interest is 4. I hope you, you got me. We have, you have now to make the same example in your, your um, copy books or whatever, your notes, your Excel sheets, whatever. You have the same the same basis, 450 pounds, period one year, but then the interest rate is 4%. And then two questions. How much will we earn on this investment? And how much will we have after one year? So I will leave you with this for about uh, half a minute. I hope you calculate now, exactly now, because I cannot verify that. I, I trust you. You remember, at the very first lecture, I uh, underlined that one of the four cornerstones of our course would be trust. So I trust you that you're now doing these calculations. Okay? Okay. Still uh, some seconds. It's not too complicated. I hope that you will soon come to the answer. Let's wait still a um, couple of seconds. Maybe I will take a a sip of a nice black tea. Right. Let's see. Do you have the same thing as I have? Probably, I hope. When it's 4%, then how much will we earn? 0 .0, uh, 0 0.04 multiplied by 450 it is 18, so we earn 18. And then how much we will have? 450 
multiplied by 1.004 means 468. I, um, I hope it is all clear and I hope honestly you have all the same answer. So now the situation is a bit trickier, right? I will give you another task. The principle remains the same, 450. But suddenly the period will be six months. Not one year, but six months. And the yearly interest rate in this task will be 12%. So please do the same example with 450 pounds, six months, and the yearly interest rate of 12. So please do the calculations right now, right now, and see what will we arrive Let's wait a bit a moment because you have to do these calculations. Everybody is doing uh, some consultations, obviously with your <coughs> neighbor are allowed. You could do it uh, to check, have a look. All right, still 15 seconds to arrive to the answer. Okay, let's see it. So when we have this example, there is a bit trickier because if we count what we have after six months and hopefully it's payable after six months, this is like underlining um, comment. So the answer would be like yearly interest rate, 12, we divide by two and then it's multiplied by 450. So it means it's 27. So if we add up 450 plus 27, we arrive to 477. Alternatively, we do it in the same way. 450 multiplied by one plus 0 0.1 divided by two. So as well, the result will be the same, 477. This small example brings us to the point what will happen if these periods are more than one? What will happen if the investment is more than one year? And with this uh, question, I will leave you at the end of the part two of our lecture two and i will start with this point with the part three so thank you very much for that and i hope that you are in you have enjoyed that and see you soon we have started to say what will happen if the investment is is actually larger than one year because so far we have uh, calculated a couple of examples that assume very important factors firstly that the interest rate is expressed for the entire period of the investment and secondly, that the examples assumed a yearly interest rate and the investment in period not longer than one year. But what would happen 
if the interest rate is expressed yearly, but the investment is longer than period of one year, say it will be in like five years or maybe 50. So what would happen? Because it's, again, we operate in economics in like one year time. This is the normal period where businesses happen, especially in agriculture. So it's unlikely, really, that somebody would wait for a long, long time to touch it. He would like to have something earlier. So what happens is that there is a um, thing called compounding. Compounding and interest on compounding, interest on interest. What, what does it mean? That say you have invested something like a period in a period of time that it's not clear, it may be several years, but you are happy with the investment. You placed some money at the given interest. So this, this interest actually after a period, it depends obviously the, the agreement, but in normal situations, this interest after a year is added to your principal. So as a matter of fact, you start the next period with a larger amount. But before getting into the detail, let's concentrate on some definitions. So compounding is the process of accumulating interest on an investment over time to a more interest. So it's commonly called interest on interest because when it interest is added, then this added interest produce interest in the future, interest on interest. Compound interest, interest earned on both the initial principal and the interest reinvested, accumulated from prior periods. Simple interest, interest earned only on the original principal, because as well, we could calculate like the very simple interest. We put the principal and then we calculate the simple interest. Interest on interest, this is interest earned on the reinvestment of previous interest payments. How does it work? Maybe we will go there step by step. <coughs> so how it works in practice. So we have a initial amount of money, say several, like 1000 pounds. And this principle is paid in, in the bank account or in the investment, something like this. The interest rate is fixed. It is fixed at certain amount. Then this interest rate considers a period. Almost always it will be a yearly, like per annum or per year or yearly. It's one year. This, we have to, to present the interest rate based on the period. So we could say 12% yearly or 12% per year or 12% per annum. After this period, the interest rate creates the interest because interest is money. Interest rate is percentage. It's very important. The interest rate creates the interest expressed in money. So if we place 100, then the interest is 12, 12%. So the interest rate is 12%, but the interest created by this interest rate is 12 pounds. And usually after the period, this interest is added to the principal. So in our verbal example, 100 pounds at 12 percent after a year 12 pounds added so we start the next period with a higher number we started with 112 as the result at the beginning 
of the next period, the amount of money is bigger. Yes, what I just said. Principal plus interest. Therefore, in the next period, the interest is calculated by implementation of the interest rate to the larger amount. Pretty clear. Therefore, in this next period, the interest is calculated, it should be a D there, sorry, is calculated on both the initial principal and the interest earned in the previous period. So this is the description of the theory, how it works. Well, not only theory, this works how, how it is in practice. This compounding. So now we will make a small example of interest on interest. Let's suppose there will be some mathematics. Let's suppose we make a two year, two year investment that pays a wonderful 20% per year. In other words, this investment has a yearly interest rate at 20%. Nice. If you put 300 euros in this investment, how much will you have at the end of two years, assuming the compounding? So, and then there's the question, how much is compound interest? How much of this is simple interest? And how much of this is interest on interest? It sounds maybe scary, but it's not. Because we will go again, as in my lectures, step by step. No surprises. So at the end of the first year, we have this 300 euros multiplied by 1 point plus 0.2 which means 360. I, I suppose it's clear for everybody. Yeah, from, from every 100, it's 20 earned, so it's 60, 360. Very well. Then, under the assumption that you keep your money at the same conditions, what means, in fact, that you reinvest the entire amount of money, 360, means you compound the interest for one more later, then we have that at the end of the second year, you have 360 euros from the first year multiplied by one plus 0.2 means 432. It's like adding this interest from the first year to the principal and then starting the second year with a higher number. So now we will answer we will answer our questions. So the total interest earned, how much is that? If we started with 300 euros and at the end of the period we have 432, it means that the total interest earned on this investment is clearly 132 euros. And then if we calculate the simple interest, Please concentrate now. This is important. Please concentrate. If we calculate the simple interest, because one year we, we earn 20% of 300, yeah, and this 300 is still the principal, so the simpler interest next year would be as well 20% on 300. So means that the simple interest earned on that it's obviously 120 euros because they are this is the sum of two periods of simple interest you follow the numbers you follow 
Yeah, but then you ask, okay, but total interest earned is 132. Yes, so it's higher. It's clearly higher than two simple interests. It is higher because at the second year, you remember, we started with a larger number. So therefore, there is more money. So this remaining 12 euro means the difference between 132 and 120. This is the result of this magic compounding. It means that it's an interest on interest because this 12 euro was gained because at the beginning of the second year we had a higher figure so it is this 12 percent earned on this higher figure so the interest on interest earned only in the second year because in the first one there was only a simple one okay clear means that it is earned and uh, from the from the difference of the 60 so it is 12 percent so coming down to our example uh, let's make clear what is what before we go for a break in our lecture and before the end of the part three we have to find what is the amount of the principal in our case what is the amount of simple interest what is the process of having interest on interest called and what is the amount of compound interest and what is the amount of the interest on interest please answer in your copy books or in your sheets in your um, on your whatever notes you are taking please answer in this example that we had just right now let me come back to this example it looked like uh, it looked like this yeah 320 percent we invested so we invested second year total interest earned interest on interest okay and this is the, the other questions please write down Write it down because this is, will be the most likely the last thing we have done before the break. So now you are answering what is the principle? What is the amount of the principle? You have written. What is the amount of simple interest? You have written. Uh, what is the process of having interest on interest called? You have written. What is the amount of the compound interest? You have written. And what is the amount of interest on interest? Hopefully you have written. Therefore, let's see the answers. Obviously, the principal is 300. This is the initial amount of money. Simple interest is 60 euro per year, which means 120 euros in two years. The process of having interest on interest is called compounding. The amount of the compound interest on everything is 132. And the amount on, of the interest on the interest is 12. Having said that, I will stop in this moment. I honestly hope that you have now the clear view of compounding and the future value of money. If there is an interest rate that produces interest that it's added to the initial investment yearly and then it accumulates. We are accelerating. So how it looks like in a graph like investing in um, for multiple periods you invest 300 say 300 pounds at 20 percent 
year one, 300 pounds multiplied by 1.2, 3.60. Then uh, year, uh, year two, it's 300, it starts with 360 multiplied 1.2, 432. Then in very nice graph is 300 multiplied 1.2 multiplied 1.2. What, in other words, is 300 multiplied by 1.2 square means 432. A bit of hardcore mathematics in front of us because we are putting this into nice formulas. It looks like this. I suppose there is not much to be on this uh, page because you could study it. It's just the same but written in a mathematic language. So, small summary about the interest. So, assume you have $100 at the banks for 7% interest, so means interest rate is 7%. So, after a year, you have 100 multiplied 1 plus R. Means 100 multiplied by 1.07. It means 107. So, as a result, as a mathematic concept or in economic way, you give up the opportunity to spend, to consume, to eat for your own purposes, pleasure, satisfaction, need, whatever, 100, but you gain an opportunity to spend this money in a form of multiplied form 107 in a year okay and how it looks when it's invested in two years period then we have the compound interest you put this 100 at seven percent you have 107 then you start the next period with 107 multiplied by again the same rate 1.07 means 114.49 so we mean it means again in economic wording through through uh, mathematics that you have given up this opportunity of eating consuming enjoying 100 dollars now in order to enjoy consume eat 114.49 in two years time so this compound interest if the sum c is inve invested for t years the interest rate is r the investment amount to c multiplied one plus r t so it is pretty obvious from this that there are a couple of factors that make your investment bigger. I mean, as simple as that, if you put more money, obviously, uh, then you will have more money, right? But when, um, as well, it depends heavily on the interest rate. Because the higher interest rate, then you gain much more in the future. It goes like a snowball. It actually goes like a snowball. And your savings, because of this compounding, might skyrocket your future savings. Another uh, small summary in the example. If we have investment of a long time say 20 years and then the rate is five percent you might calculate this I, I i invite you to use your calculators right now and calculate that that when you have 100 dollars invested for 20 years at the rate of five then you will have 265.33 but the situation changes quite radically when we multiply the interest rate by 2 and it's 10 
suddenly, because of this compounding, the result at the end is not linear. It's not twice 265. No, it's much more. It's 672.75. So making the interest rate higher twice made the the final result much bigger than twice. But then what will happen if instead of five, we use 15%? I mean, there is an investment that brings that hopefully. So it means that 100 multiplied by 1.15 in 20 years will give a astonishing number of 1,636.65. So it's much, much more, not three times more of 265. It's much more. So you could calculate yourself how much more, but it's stunning. So it makes you aware that the higher interest rate, the higher final result will be. Again, to make you more aware of that, there is a small picture like this, and it shows this investment. This was our invest $100. We invest this for 20 years at certain rates, and you could easily see, you could easily see how it grows. That if it stays flat, is here, is this brown line, then um, if it's uh, at five, it's sort of this uh, pinkish line. And then when it's at 10, this is the blue line. And then if it's sort of reddish purple, it's the higher line. You could see the slope is going much, much higher, especially at the end of the period. This is really an incredible and stunning example of how the compounding works in practice. Let's make and um, an example it will involve some much more calculation so if somebody is lost you may obviously look at your neighbor's calculations no problem i could see no problem with that and again you could uh, verify on sari learn later on pdf but let's speed up and work like that what would happen if there is an investment for many years and after every year, there is a process of compounding interest. The example here is 100 pounds at 10% interest rate invested for five years. Five years is not too long, but still it's a substantial amount of time. The simple question is how much will you have at the end of five years. I'm sure, please do it now. I will wait about a minute for your results. Please do it now. So far you grasp the concept, I'm sure, and then you have the notes and you know how to do it, how to compound the interest. 100 pounds at 10% interest rate for five years. How much will you have at the end of five years? I hope, I hope that uh, you have calculated this already. So let's see the result right now. 100 pounds at 10 percent for five years so it's 100 multiplied by one plus zero one in brackets to the fifth gives 161.05 i'm i'm sure everybody has the same answer it's calculated like this because we use the 100 pounds, then the factor to multiply, because it's interest R, time is five. So it, the result is 161.05. If somebody does not believe that 
it is like that, we have a very nice table that shows this really in like step by step because we have year one and the beginning amount of 100. The simple interest would be 10. Interest of interest is not existing because it's the first period. So compound interest in this case would obviously be equal to simple interest. So it's 110. But we start the next year with 110. So it means that the simple interest is 10. But then we earn interest on interest because 10% from 110 would be uh, would be um, 11. So it the compound interest is constructed of simple and interest on interest. So it's 11, 121. So we start the third year again with 121. Simple interest 10, interest on interest 2.1 and so on and so on and so on. After the, the, the year 5, we arrive to the figure 161.05. So the simple interest, in this case, accumulated simple interest will be 50. Interest on the interest will be 11.05. So compound interest would be 61.05. So please have a look on that. Let's digest. And obviously there are, uh, in practice, there are some tables that uh, show the figures that we should use, uh, they are in economics, the ready tables. Uh, in, if people do not have Excel or um, a calculator, they are on paper. So um, with the interest rate and number of periods, you could easily calculate the future uh, value because this is the future value. After compounding, this would be the future value. So as in this... Um, Example 1 plus 0, 0 0.5 to the first one is 105, obviously. But then to the second, it will be 1.1025 and so on and so on. So please digest this. But then I would like to show you another interesting picture. It is this, the compound on interest and the simple interest principle remains the same the simple interest is in linear absolutely linear form and then the compound interest you could see how it grows in the year 20 the compound interest like interest on interest is much higher than the simple one and much higher than the principle itself to make it again for those who prefer this in this way it looks like this okay time time for the working exercise questions before we end this part of the uh, lecture so please do it now sort of quickly you have found an investment that pays 10% per year you decide to invest so you invest 5000 and there is a compounding of the interest after each year and there are five questions how much will you have in four years how much will you have in eight years at at the end of eight years how much interest will you have earned how much is the simple interest per year and which is part and which part is simple interest how much of that interest results from compounding so please write it down because you will make some calculations yeah investment is 10% per year, investment is 5,000, there is compounding. First, how much will you have in four years? How much will you have in eight years? 
after eight years how much interest will you have earned how much is the simple interest per year simple interest per year this is important in this question and how much is the simple interest after eight years obviously and how much is that interest results from compounding okay let's see so after four years you will have 5,000 multiplied by 1.1 to the fourth means 7,320.5 after eight years you will have 5,000 multiplied by 1.1 to the eighth means 5,000 multiplied by the factor, 10,717.94. So interest earned, total interest earned, would be 10,717.94 minus initial five, means 5,717.94. Simple interest per year, I suppose this was the simplest question, is 10% from 5,000 means 500. So total simple interest of over eight years, it's 500 multiplied by eight, 4,000. So what is the interest from compounding? It's 5,717.94, which is the total interest, minus 4,000 means 1,000, 717.94.